Hi everyone, welcome to my talk. Um, so today I'll be speaking about future of artificial intelligence and machine learning in software testing. But before starting with that, I wanted to introduce myself first. I am Shreya Asthana, working as a senior software quality engineer with Red Hat. And it's been around 2.5 um, years since I am with Red Hat. So I have been involved in uh, many testing tools like Selenium, Cypress, Lemon Cheesecake, um, including the language Java, uh, JavaScript, Python, and so on. Apart from this, I also do have some uh, techno-functional skill uh, related to the ERP application like Workday and Oracle Cloud. So that's pretty much about myself. Let's start with the presentation. Okay, so this is the agenda. So we will talk about what exactly the AI, ML, and the deep learning is. We will talk about AI history, um, why we need the AI in software testing, the problem, the solution, the tool, um, what is going to be happen at the back end of uh, AI-based te testing tool, benefits and the challenges of AI and AI current application. So let's begin with the presentation. Okay, so this is the picture which um, having you know relationship between the AI, machine learning, and the deep learning. So AI is the development of computer system that performs the task which typically requires the human intelligence, such as recognition of speech, uh, recognition of image, and understanding the natural languages. Um, and also AI is having, you know, it is a broader field that contains the many subfield like machine learning, deep learning. So let's talk about what exactly the machine learning is. Machine learning um, is all about training the computer algorithm so that it can find out the patterns from the data. And um, it's basically the main aim is to create a model that can identify the pattern and can make a prediction and a decision based upon um, the data that they haven't seen before. Now next is what is deep learning. Deep learning uses a neural network, and um, it performs the task which is a little complex, like recognition of image and speech. Um, apart from this also, it simulates exactly the same way as the human brain works. So this is all about AI, machine learning, and deep learning. Okay, so in this particular slide, we will, um, you know, see how AI came into the picture and how it transformed into the different, um, you know, um, you know, the different sectors. So I have divided this slide into the three generation, first generation, second generation, and the third one. So first one is all about large data set. Um, so in the online um, fraud detection and suspension, AI worked on analyzing the history of users, and also it, you know, it, it analyzed the history just to provide the risk rule. And um, user can also create the risk rule by allowing and blocking some user section. Um, and also the, you know, users can flag fraud and the non-fraud activity so as to provide, you know, so as to avoid the false positive and to provide the better risk solution. Now let's see how AI help in the supply chain management. Um, AI help in the supply chain management uh, by, you know, it help in telling the accurate inventory management. It helps in predicting the demand. It helps in understanding or letting the users know the shortage and the excess of an asset in the store at given point of time. Now let's talk about the second generation. So second generation is uh, you know, all about studying about the human being. So while studying the human data, AI created a um, you know, social media platform and the recommendation system. So creating a smaller recommendation system was a a easy challenge, but creating a big recommendation system which can handle millions of users and millions of data was a massive development in the terms of AI. Um, now let's move to the third generation. So now third generation is all about creating a machine that can mimic a human being. 
but I can say that we are still very far away from the true humanoid. Now the question is, what is next after 2020? So um, basically, what is next after 2020 related to the software testing world, right? So before starting with, you know, why we need, let's understand, you know, how AI help in the software testing. Let's see why even we need it, right? So um, AI automation needs sustainability. It means that your automation script needs to be sustainable, it needs to be maintained, it needs to be refracted, and it needs the same attention as the business-related code. Uh, decrease the maintenance effort, it's, it means like uh, maintenance is a uh, time-consuming and it is costly. So this can also be the challenge of implementing the software testing without the AI. Now the third is root cause analysis is a time-consuming and annoying. I completely agree with this because let's take an example that your test cases are running in the CI pipeline and um, your report got generated. And you, once you open the report, you saw that many of the test cases or you can say, you know, 50% of the test cases are failing due to the same reason, right? So why we need to invest our time in fixing same failure for so many test cases, right? So these are the challenges which I saw we are right now having in the software testing without implementing the AI. So I started doing some research and got to know that there is a survey which tells us that 75% of the test automation script are failing due to either bad locator strategy and uh, locator change. So this is the problem which I you know, identify. Let's move to the solution, but before moving to the solution, let's talk a little more about the problem. Okay, so now what exactly the problem is? Yeah, so problem is unable to locate element. That is exception, no such element. Okay, I think many of you have already, you know, familiar with this exception, but still I wanted to explain a little more about it. So what exactly the no such element exception is? This kind of exception occur when, why are you creating a any UI test cases? And it happens when there is an application change and the locator change or any property that has been changed for a specific application. So now what is the solution? Solution is the self-healing in the test automation. So self-healing in the test automation is one of the technique that has been provided by the AI-based testing tool. Um, we can see that nowadays we have a lot of tool in the market which is based upon the AI. I mean the AI-based testing tool. So the user might be confused to choose one of them according to their requirement, right? So, um, but before seeing the tool, let's you know, understand what exactly the self-healing is. Um, it is an automation of an automation. So um, you have an automation and there is some change that has been application, uh, up, you know, I can say application change. So what AI-based testing tool do is it heal your automation script. Like it creates the automation based upon your automation framework. So that is why it is called the automation of an automation. Okay, so now um, it is based upon the AI algorithm. Uh, so I mean, this will going to be talk little more detail in the later slide. Um, it stores the information about the application. So it means that um, your AI based testing tool um, stores the application about your application, about your system, and about your um, objects. Um, test heals the automation script. We have already saw that. It helps in reducing the maintenance. So yeah, it helps in reducing the manual effort, which you know can reduce the cost and which can reduce the time, which involve in doing the manual task. So this is all about the self-healing, which is provided by the AI-based testing tool. So we have a lot of tool in the market that I have already told, and it is quite confusing for the users to choose one of them. So uh, don't worry about that. I will. I am not going to share the one of the you know best tool, but we will going to talk about how many tools we have in the market. So um, we have the Mabel. We have Testim. We have Tricentis. 
and we have Helenium. So I'll take or maybe pick one of the testing tool in order to let you all understand how the AI based testing tool work. So I just chose Helenium. It, it, it just, um, it is random, not any biasing, you know. Okay, so Helenium, let's talk a little about what exactly the Helenium is. It is an open source, it is based upon the Selenium and Java. So it is having a prerequisite that if your test cases is Selenium and if you're writing the test cases on the Selenium, which is and the Java, um, this is a prerequisite. And also like if you're using Selenium and Python, then you have to use um, Helenium proxy. Real-time engine. So it doesn't require to install on any server. It just tied up with your test cases and it runs automatically. So installation is very easy. Integration is very easy. So the next point is integration. So we just spoke about it. Integration is very easy. Uh, machine learning algorithm. So behind the AI-based testing model or tool, there is a machine learning algorithm which is running and it provides you the solution, right? Um, integration done on the web driver IO. So in the image, you can see that um, I have created a Chrome, Chrome, uh, Chrome driver, and with the object of Chrome driver, I have tied up self-healing driver. So this is how that you have to integrate your um, Helenium object with your Chrome driver. So it is very easy to set up. So now I have chosen in Helenium to let you all understand how the AI-based testing tool work. Okay, so this is an example which I have prepared for you all. Um, the monitor is considered as your test framework. We have a Helenium jar, we have a Helenium backend, and we have a UI on which we will going to do the automation. So in the, um, you know, Normal scenario, what happens is when you write your script, um, it try to find the element, okay? So we will try to, you know, uh, automate the password. Password is having an ID, MP password one. And your automation is also having find by ID by MP password one. So till then, we are good to go. So what happened is your framework will going to find this element on the UI, and UI respond that, okay, cool, element found. So now what exactly happened when Helenium come into the picture? It, your script, your framework, inter, uh, you know, interact with Helenium jar, and it tells the Helenium jar that we found this locator successfully. And now further, Helenium jar will interact with the Helenium backend, and it will save the locator which is there on the UI, I mean, which is running successfully. Um, this is the regular scenario. Now, one climax come into the picture. We have a version, new version, and uh, related to the naming convention of an attribute ID. So now, your application password field ID is changed from MP password one to password. Now in the regular scenario, what happened is you go to your script and you keep on changing the locator. Let's suppose if you have a five, 50 locator changes, then you have to do the same task 50 times, right? You will go your uh, page object and you will, you know, locator file and you will change uh, the object 50 times. So, but now you don't have to be worried about that because we have a Helenium in the picture. Now, what, what exactly Helenium will do is, okay, your ID is changed to the password. Now, what Helenium will do is it again try to find the element. And without the Helenium, it will try to find the element and it will say that no such exception, which we have already saw that if there is a kind of uh, locator change, then these kind of exception come. I, I mean, I think testers must be familiar with this kind of exception, that we, we, have, we have to go through this like, exception um, quite frequently. Okay, so once this exception came, what our automation script do is, it again uh, interact with Helenium jar. It tells the Helenium jar that Oh no, this, this time we are unable to find the locator. So now what Helenium jars do, Helenium jar again 
interact with you know Helium backend and it um, tells the page state. And now the next thing which happen is between the Helium jar and the Helium backend. So between these two, there is a AI algorithm which work. They work the AI algorithm and Helium produce a new locator. And this new locator is called the healed locator. And this Helium jar, you know, provide this healed locator to your script. And inside the script, you can see that ID is now being upgraded to password. Okay, so now manual intervention is cut. And now it again tried to find the element and the element found. So this is the architecture that has been set up behind the AI based testing tool. Okay, so we have talked about the problem, the solution, the tool. Let's talk a little about benefits and the challenges that we have for using these kind of AI based testing tool. So it improves the test coverage. So AI analyze a billion of amount of uh, you know data and while analyzing those data it find the detect that or maybe sorry it find the defect that may go undetected while doing the testing you know so that is why it increased the test automation um, coverage and it also try to decrease the risk of um, rate of risk uh, which might be, you know, sleeping through the cracks. Faster, so its execution is very fast. Um, the defect uh, detection is accurate, and it also have a test plan and the execution, which is quite better. Self-healing, I think that this we have already saw that um, it's self-heal, it provides one of the mechanism, which is a self-healing. Predictive analysis, okay. So while analyzing the data, or while, you know, fetching the data, AI predict the uh, like a future poten uh, potential issue and it delivers the same to the testing team so that a testing team might be alert before it can you know be the bigger problem while doing the release and so and also it provides the big data insight to optimize the testing strategy so these are the you know benefit which I saw by using the AI based testing tool. Now let's see the challenges of using the AI based testing tool. So um, yeah, it requires the specialized, you know, specialized skill and the expertise to handle these kind of um, tool. And it uh, related to the infrastructure and resource. So AI um, is computationally very expensive. And it is estimated that to implement a AI model, it is getting, you know, doubled every 3.5 months from 2012 to 2018. Maybe that is why it has been used by the big giant company only. Um, difficult in choosing the right tool that we already saw that we have so many tools in the market. Um, so it, it could be quite difficult in choosing the tool which is right for you. Data management and quality. So AI produce a sample data, but before going to the production, it requires the high quality data. Else developer has, you know, maybe has a risk to garbage in and garbage out. So this could also be the challenge and the security and the privacy concern. So I think this is a very, very much important because uh, if I talk about the organization, so it could be possible that organization doesn't want to share their data, right? And we know that AI based testing tool fetch or stores your application data, your system data, your object data. That might be the security risk for any organization. So this is the biggest challenge for using the AI based testing tool. So we saw the benefit challenges. Now the current application. Virtual assistant. So we will talk about how the AI is been, you know, used by the other different, you know, industries. So um, in order to use in the virtual assistant like Google, Alexa, Siri, these are using the AI algorithm to um, understand the human command and to provide the, you know, information and to perform the task. This is how it has been used in the virtual assistant. Um, recommendation system. So like Netflix, 
Amazon, Spotify, what these are doing is these are fetching the human data and it try to store the preferences about the human and according to that preferences, it suggests or recommend you the song, the movie, the product. So this is how it has been in the, in the uh, you know, recommendation system as well. Autonomous vehicle. So company like Tesla, these are... Um, you know, using the AI deep learning and the other um, algorithm to create a self-driving car. So what does the self-driving car do is it, it, at the back end, they are also using the deep learning, machine learning and so many complex things, you know, to understand the surrounding and on the basis of that surrounding, they take a decision that is a driving decision. Natural language processing. So AI powered natural language processing like um, your Google Translator, your chat boot. These are also again using the AI algorithm, AI ML and the deep learning. Fraud detection. So um, while analyzing a lot amount of data, AI categorize the fraud and the non-fraud activity by analyzing a million data. So for this also, AI can prevent your fraud detection. Uh, example is if you are using your banking phone and um, it capture your live location that on this location, you usually log in your internet banking or something like that. But if you log in through some other country or some other location, it you know uh, send you the email or maybe the text that on this location it is trying to log in into your internet banking. Is it you or not? That is mean that at the back end, AI is storing your information about how you do the things. Basically, it categorizes fraud and the non-fraud activity. So it is also helping in detecting the fraud activity. Healthcare diagnosis. So um, AI now has been used in the healthcare industry as well. So it used in um, analyzing um, the X-ray, analyzing MRI, analyzing CT scan in order to find out, uh, you know, the different diseases like cancers and other anomalies. So it also helped the radiologist in their diagnosis. Personalized uh, advertisement. So personalized advertisement like Facebook advertisement, Google advertisement. These are targeting the advertising campaign and according to the user preferences, they are suggesting, you know, the advertisement. Um, financial trading. So AI algorithm also help in analyzing the news, analyzing the financial data and in order to track or maybe to, uh, you know, help in detecting the stock uh, stock market or something. So that is why it is used in financial trading as well. The last one is customer service chat boot. I think nowadays many organization are using this customer um, service chat boot in order to cut down the manual intervention, in order to provide a common query and the instant customer support. So these are the different industry you can see nowadays are using AI. So uh, before ending my presentation, um, I wanted to share one thing with you all, you know, while creating this presentation, one constant question was running into my mind. And that question was, will AI going to replace software engineers? So anybody in the room who is uh, having the same kind of question like me, maybe they can raise your hand. Okay. Pretty much, I think. Okay. So, um, according to me, I think this will never going to happen because um, in 1977 or 1978, there was a thing called program generator that came into the picture and people were saying that this will going to take away all youngsters job. But this never happened. You know the reason behind it? So, the reason behind it is a human brain. I think it is so flexible and so compatible and you know, it adopt the thing so quickly that nothing can replace the human brain. So what happened is people started solving the bigger and bigger problem, which these AI um, or this program generator were unable to handle it. 
and uh, you know so that is why ai ml so uh, deep learning these are good we should welcome it we can consider this as a base and on that base we can show our creativity we can show our smartness we can show our innovation so with that positive note i am done with my presentation let's move to the q and a anybody is having any question yeah if nothing you have changed on the page Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So it will going to handle that thing also. It can, you know, uh, give you a notification or sort of message that this particular thing has been changed because anyhow, AI uh, uh, analyze your attribute this which is attached to the element, and if there is some change, edit, delete, or add, it will going to alert the user, and accordingly, it will you know modify because in your uh, current. code or maybe current test automation script you have not written that particular field or you are not using that particular attribute obviously it will not going to add that in your framework because might be that it is not a functional test that you want to do right but still this will going to alert the user or populate that this particular part has been changed or added and now it is added now it is up to you that you want to add or not so yeah yeah please Okay, so our script is good, but still we are getting the error. Might be that it is not the locator error. Yeah. So it's like on the scenario, AI will really help us or not? Um. Yeah. So related to the self healing, self healing will not going to help this up because self healing is all about locator. You know, changing the uh, if there is some modification has been done on the locator part. So it only handles the locator part. But later on, like if something else has been changed, so that is might be the different feature which. Uh, you know can be uh, provided by ai testing tool or not so as i told in the previous si slide said we are having a lot of ai testing tool in the market and different different testing tool is provide the different different you know um mechanism and um, you know the things it provides so now i just choose one of them and they are providing the self healing it might be that in uh, another tool is providing this mechanism also which you are saying so it is up to user that how you are you know doing the r&d and picking up the testing tool um yeah please okay this Okay, so the question is um, asked is um, if there is some kind of change that happen on the application. So uh, AI will going to change it at runtime only, or after um, the you know execution, it will change something, right? This is the question. Yeah. Okay. Mhm. Mm okay. I I got your I got your question. So uh the answer is it will ask that this is changed. Do you want to heal this? So if you do the yeah, I want to heal, it will heal else it will not. I think you have to decide the solution. It could be like um, it possible that if you want to uh, always ask the AI to heal, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think this is a manual task that you have to do. Uh, okay, heal. Okay, do not heal this time. So this is how that you have to handle. I think that you must have it when it can be automated. Yeah.
yeah so it might be in the configuration of you know the ai uh, tool ai tool it, it it could be the separate configuration you can do let's skip this part focus on this or something like that so it is all about the configuration of uh, ai based testing tool uh, yeah somebody else was uh, yeah please Okay, so um, AI-based testing algorithm, what exactly the testing algorithm has been used behind it, right? So uh, I think uh, I need to do some research because uh, I didn't know what exactly the algorithm has been used as a tester. We just wanted to show that it provides you the heel locators or um, something that has been populated um, that is, uh, you know, much deep into algorithm, deep learning and so on. So that um, might be, we need to look up. Uh, somebody else was there, okay. Mobile, impl I am unable to understand. Can you please just repeat mobile implement implementation of AI? Yeah, so actually it tells you all the data, but it cannot tells you that, uh, it tells you or make a prediction about specific to your application because it got integrated with your application. So it fetch the data about that system and provide you the prediction, the future prediction related to that system only, like that application only. It cannot tell you that, okay, this might be a problem in the mobile or something like that on which, uh, you know, application you integrate, it only tells you about that. Yeah. Anybody else is having any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Intermittent issue like um, not related to. So it comes under the flaky test case. Um, yeah, exactly. First, uh, false failure and the flaky test case. So um, if you're using any um, reporting tool, it can easily tell you that, you know, this is a flaky test case and um, it doesn't uh, count in that particular part. Yeah. Anybody else? Any questions? Yeah, please. Um, I can't hear you. Oh, to automate? Um, I think it cannot automate from scratch. Surely it will not. But it can help you in eliminating the things that we do after we have uh, automation script ready. So for the first time you have to do, but after that we have a tons of thing to do, uh, we as a tester do, like maintaining a script, doing some changes to the script, you know, these many things. So, <clears throat> so these part of thing is been handled by the AI, not that from the scratch. Most welcome, um, anybody else is having any questions? I think we are good.